everybody. Then we'll have a look at some of these cheaper end power bikes you can get off of eBay for not too much. Um, I ordered these online a while back. Paid $6 for four. And they arrived in the mail today. I have each and every one of them opened up. You can get these in a, in a um, variety of different colors, um, such as white, blue, black, brown, yellow, and I think green. I had this black one here that I got back in the summer last year. Um, it provided quite a bit of decent service until um, I, one day I was charging it and it fell out the front of the computer, fell on the floor. This is at work. And it was about a two foot drop and it, it just when it hit the ground the solder connection for the micro USB port broke and it wouldn't charge anymore. So since this one's broke, I can actually take the little PCB out and show you what's inside there. Essentially I bought these because these purple 18650s here need a need a good home. <laughs> need to be useful for something. Um adjust my tripod here. Oh, that's crap on the table. So I figured I'm going to take a moment to go ahead and pop the PCB out of this one. I already popped it out one time. It broke the solder joints on both the um, B positive and B negative. The battery hookups. I'm going to do this that way you can actually see what this board looks like on both sides. There's not really too much to these things and that's why they can be made for so cheap. And from the way it looks, it, I believe these are assembled um, and actually installed the um, battery terminals after they install these PCB into the pack. You'll see why here shortly. Um, this is actually what the little circuit board looks like. Get you a good focus on that. Has an LED here that you can use for as a flashlight. Pretty convenient little feature. This here is the USB output port where you can plug your devices into charge. Here's the micro USB port for charging the device. And down here you'll have, you see there's a button. That's used to turn on the, turn on and turn off the built-in flashlight, this LED here. And there are two LEDs right there. One is blue, one is red. The blue one indicates that the power bank is in use. The red one indicates that it's charging. When it's flat, when the blue one flashes, it means the battery is low. When it's solid, it just means it's in use. The red one, whenever it's charging, it's flashing, and when it's fully charged, it lights up constantly. Not too much to it. And this little PCB, this, I'm sorry, this little integrated circuit is what is responsible for doing the step up and step down of the power and acting as a means of protection for the battery. Looks to be FM9833E. Let's go and look that up and see if we can find a data sheet. Okay, everybody, I was able to find a data sheet, but it's all in Chinese. But it does give you a schematic of how this works. You have, um, essentially, it's an 8-pin device. You have VCC coming in from the USB input. You have what looks to be boost, charge, program, 
<laughs> this is the ground. The out, which is the charging, which is that not to, yeah, the output from the batteries. I mean, from the charger itself. And you can see um, the how the battery is actually hooked up. Again, there's not a whole lot to this entire circuit. And I think the 2K resistor on the pro on the program lead does either one or two functions. It can program the charging um, current from the USB input, or it can be used to tell the circuit how high to charge the batteries, being 4.2 or 4.35 volts, because there are batteries out there that do, in fact, charge up to the higher amount. Now, as for what they slap on the, um, they, they actually put some information on, on the back of this thing, which all of it is incorrect, by the way. It claims that the input is DC 501 amp. We already see that this charge is off of about 600 milliamp. It says the output is 5 volts, 1.5 amps, when we know that it puts out one amp and then and they go as far as to slap a capacity on there and that 5600 milliamp hour capacity is what you would get if you were to put two 2800 milliamp hour 18650s in there which chances are likely you're not going to have 18650s that large or you could have maybe some good Panasonic's in there that are over 3000 milliamp hours so you could actually have more <laughs> So, with these four power banks, we have an opportunity to look at sort of the build quality across the line. Which, by the way, guys, one of these has a problem. There's a second one. That one appears to be okay. Here's the third one. Which also appears to be okay. Well, let's have a look at number four down here. If you look carefully, you notice something here. They forgot to solder the battery plus and battery negative leads onto the PCB. They're sitting there, but they're not soldered on. And same goes for this one over here. It's just touching. It's not actually soldered on there. Which, you know, I can, you know, I can, I can fix that. I can heat up the soldering iron and solder those two together, but still, that's kind of ridiculous. And we'll be emailing the seller about this as well off of eBay. It's saying, hey, look, you... One of these you sent me was not even finished from the factory. And this one right here also, by the way, had a heck of a time getting the plastic cover to pop loose. Normally, they, they're not too difficult to get off of there. They're, they're only nice and firm, so that way they don't invert, inadvertently pop off. But um, This one here, I'm thinking that when it went through quality control they're like oh, oh I can't get this off here ah oh, screw it I was going to go ahead and consider it okay and just toss it into the dumb bin but yeah look at this yeah that makes me question quality control in general when you find something like that Okay, I went ahead and fixed this one. At least I soldered the positive battery terminal and the negative battery terminal on. I also found issues with the other three. While they worked, um, there were significant hazards I had noticed with them. This is pretty important. I mean, yeah, really. 
Um, I forget which one, but if you happen to buy these, I would strongly recommend you check them over carefully to make sure that they are properly assembled. Use this. Use the light on this one. Um, that wire that goes down the center, that's your negative wire coming from the back from the two cells. Um, I noticed on one of these that that um, connection is this a is this a piece of bare wire? Um, and apparently, it was okay. So what was going on is this piece was a was was up much higher than it should be. It was only about a few millimeters away from touching this, which is positive. If those touch, you have a dead short. So that's why it's very important that you know they are nowhere near touching. I also had to resolder not well. I had to resolder, but I went ahead and melted the solder and moved these leads over just a little bit and pushed this down. That way, this is nowhere near touching this. So I'm already pretty fed up with the um, quality control on these, which, you know, for this kind of thing, you wouldn't really expect all that great of quality control. But, I mean, come on, seriously? When you have one where the negative and positive leads are not even soldered to the um, PCB, that's just, that's just ridiculous. But all three of these other ones are okay now. But, um... Yeah, seeing that made me a little, made me feel a little uneasy about these things because you know they do contain two eighteen six fifty batteries in them. Um, but I had this black one for several months and used it quite a quite a lot, and it came, it it was very handy. I have to say it was extremely handy. Um, the only time I had a problem with it was that time that the the mini USB cable or, or micro USB jack the um, connection broke when the thing fell which brings up another thing um, I wouldn't consider these very dur durable um, it seemed like if they got dropped hard enough they could break to a point where your positive and negative touch and cause a short But I will say, um, they do seem to do a good job at charging the, my phone, that's for sure. Um, the last time I had one, you know, when the I had the black one was working, I had two of those green Sony batteries in it, which um, are one, you know, set of those up here. The SF US18 650 GRs I had two of those in there. And it would charge my phone one and a half times. My Droid Razor M, it would charge it one and a half times. Now what's interesting is how these batteries will fare. Um, those Sony's at the time were 12 years old, and they were doing pretty well, I have to say. But these are these cells here are brand new. Um, the Sony's were rated for like 24, or uh, I'm thinking 25, 50 million hours. But th again, they're 12 years old, so they weren't doing near what they would brand new. And they had higher internal resistance and, and things like that. And, um, these cells test, uh, test out to be roughly 2200 milliamp hours a piece. These came out of a 9 cell pack that, you know, I featured on my channel not too long ago that was very, very strongly constructed. The cells, however, although generic, do seem to be safe. Um, they weigh in roughly the same as your typical 18650, and no, they're not filled with sand. Um, so YouTube user, I don't know how I exactly pronounce his name, Renora Super Genius. He recently posted a video uh, cutting open some old 18650s, including a generic. And inside the generic looked about the same as um, maybe your Sanyo or Panasonic cell. It looked very similar. So these, although they're made in China, they are not um, the same as those crappy Ultra Fire batteries you get off of eBay. Now, these are commonly used in replacement laptop battery packs. 
and the, the thing I commonly see is the pack manufacturer false, you know, falsely indicating that the pack holds this big amount of capacity when it doesn't. But the cells themselves, they do seem to be the, the manufacturer does seem to be honest about rating this the cell capacity. So yeah, I have four uh, power banks now. I know my mom and dad definitely need um, new power banks. Um, they have one that they <laughs> that somebody had given them, and it was nearly worn out. We're going to install these remaining cells. Another thing to note is you want to check the springs and make sure they have proper tension. I mean, when you spend when when these things are this cheap, um, as you see, quality control is not that great. Um, now, the quality control on that on that black one I had previously gotten was significantly better. I think it was constructed a little bit better than this, but it's the same exact thing. It's just different color. Let's go ahead and load our cells in. And one thing to be you know, be very cautious of: make sure that you properly insert your cells. This is a two parallel configuration. You don't stick one this way and one that way. You have a dead short. So you'll see the blue light come on for a brief for a brief moment. It'll go out here shortly. There you go. And you in, you can insert the second cell. So let's say if you have only one eighteen six fifty available. You can run these on just one, no problem. You'll just have half the capacity, of course. I'm going to place the cover back on this one. And of course, this is the one that I had to make repairs to because it was, as I mentioned, not properly built. Or rather the um the salt it wasn't it wasn't finished. They they never soldered the um yeah, they never actually soldered <laughs> the PCB to the um battery terminal things. I'm gonna actually mark I'm gonna put this one to the side. Keep that one for myself. I may keep two of these. Not exactly sure yet. Again, the good thing about these, if I mentioned, is they don't come up very easily. As a matter of fact, if you were to just be building these things to sell, which I don't know if I'd recommend that, with considering how the way these things are designed. Um, well, not designed. It's just I don't. I wouldn't recommend it because of the very shoddy quality control the manufacturer has. Um, but if you were to just be building these permanently, I mean, you could run some super glue along the side and then pop the cover on, and then you probably never have to worry about it coming apart again. Again, the blue light comes on for a brief moment. Yeah, not necessarily the craziest about the, <laughs> the the construction of the springs on these things. Um, like a matter of fact, the only part that's touching this cell real well is where the wire comes over, but it's, it's making good contact. As long as it makes good contact with the bottom of the cell, it's fine. Again, these aren't fancy power banks, so I expect them to be. And last but not least, this one.
Okay, everybody, just a little update on these power banks. Um, one extra precaution I am doing with these things. Just to improve them a little bit. Make them where I, I think are a little bit safer. <laughs> um, is I am adding some reinforcement in between this positive and negative. And I'm doing that using some old leftover window insulation foam that I have. I'm just cutting off a little piece of it. Not real big. But I'm just cutting off a little piece. That might not be big enough, but let's see. I'm going to rip it off with my hand, actually. It still, it still has some adhesive on it. And I've already checked it, and it's not, and it's non-conductive. Of course, I figured that already because it's you know, the material that it is. But I double-checked it with my meter just to be sure. What I'm doing is I'm packing it in there in between this negative and that positive conductor. What I'm doing is just cramming it in there, and this, of course, it just you know, it's a foam; it just gives way. And but one thing it does is it helps keep that negative from ever touching the positive inside here. In a, in a case where this you know it gets you know set down pretty hard and <clears throat> maybe a solder joint wants to pop loose, you know you got you just gotta think about things like that ahead of time. So now I'm gonna pop the cells back in. So that's what it looks like. You can see the black foam material. It just helps, it's the sandwich between that negative wire and the positive. And of course it just, it also helps provide a little bit of padding for the cells as well, I think. Just a little bit. They don't need a whole lot, but. So there's that. Let's pop this cover back on there. And now let's do it to the rest of these. I got two more to do it with. Funny thing I noticed is when I pop these things open, it peels back the um, the sleeve on the batteries on the cells right there. Now the first one I had, I don't remember doing that with my Sony batteries. I had some green Sonys in that black power bank I used to have. Just pull these two cells out. This is again, like I believe I mentioned, um, the actual little PCB I think is constructed pretty decently. It's just um, the remaining innards, how this thing was put together, just wasn't the best of quality. Especially considering one of them was not even fully, you know, not even fully completed. But you know, to be honest, I think that's very, very shoddily made. <clears throat> Which, by the way, I already, I already have tested um, one of these. The one I initialed, I had to use it when I was doing some videos with my phone. Doing a lot of video and the battery in the phone got real low on the charge. So I plugged, plugged one of these guys in and it done a job. It charged the phone back up and um, it's still got plenty left to go, I think. I don't know exactly how many full charges I'll get out of it just yet. I just got to find out. 
Gotta experiment with them a little bit. So I got that packed in there. And it just, of course, it just goes right around this. No problem. Now let's pop the two sails back in. Okay, everybody. All four banks are assembled. I have my initials on this one. This is the one that I had to solder the terminals on because there was no solder there to begin with. In other words, this is the one I had to complete um, complete the manufacturing on because it wasn't finished. The rest of these three, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. Um, as I mentioned, I know my parents need power banks for their phones. They don't have any power banks. And this will probably work very well for them um, <clears throat> so if you decide to buy these things just be careful um, look them over carefully and I would not recommend an average Joe going out and buying these unless you're ready to potentially have to heat up your soldering iron um, I'd recommend that somebody who's familiar with soldering um, it'd be the, I would recommend somebody like that be the one who would buy these if they were to buy them um, considering I had to make modifications to fix some of these but the, the key thing is you want to this one if you decide to get these inspect them carefully make sure that the terminals are soldered on make sure that the negative wire going in the center is not too close to the positive um, um, piece on the um, front you know things like that I, and I mean I would I would I believe that this company whoever makes these they either have a certain division or they purchase these PCBs from some third party also in China but some different party and then they man they assemble the PCBs into these power bank packs because I mean the the PCB itself that's the key thing is the the circuit board it looks decently made um, and of course as I mentioned this here had pops loose but you know the, the thing fell off the front of the computer and hit the floor um, while well, with the cable with the mini USB cable or sorry micro USB cable plugged into it um, so I mean yeah I mean things like that can happen but other than that it, it looks like it's actually pretty decently built I mean pretty much you know, a good majority of the stuff is surface mount so anyway guys hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching hey everybody I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q computer channel Remember to like the video, subscribe to the Cube Crew channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that we actually get notified of these updates. Did you know that I am also on a second channel? That's CubeCop MTDX. Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, and all sorts of other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.